Welcome back to Raw Politics. Now, the European People's Party has chosen its contender to be the next European Commission president. Many were unsurprised to hear that they picked their leader, Bavarian MEP with the Christian Social Union, Manfred Weber. Weber and his outsider opponent, former Finnish Prime Minister Alexander Stubb, held a debate which was criticized for its lack of, well, debate. The biggest bone of contention in the EPP ranks is membership of Hungary's populist leader, Viktor Orban. But that issue was conspicuously not on the agenda. Well, Manfred Weber had a victory speech at the EPP conference this afternoon. Let's take a look. The Spitzen candidate for the European elections for the European People's Party for 2009 with 492 votes will be Manfred Weber. Let's use this momentum of Helsinki. Let's go back home to our cities, to our villages. Let's tell people that we have a good idea for the future of this continent. Let's fight, let's argue, let's convince, and then we will win in May 2019. But our, our political editor, Darren McCaffrey, has been covering the EPP conference this week, and he's joining us now from Helsinki. Darren, you're in the middle of the action there. Well, it wasn't surprising, was it? <laughs> It really wasn't, uh, Tess. Uh, it was uh, pretty expected results uh, when we got it uh, this afternoon that Manfred Weber had indeed uh, won. A pretty emphatic victory as well, getting what 80% of the votes, uh, four out of every five EPP uh, delegates that gathered here in uh, Helsinki. And ultimately, you know, he is the person now that could potentially go on to replace uh, Jean-Claude Juncker uh, next year, depending, of course, on the result of the election and, indeed, what the EU national leaders uh, decide. But it is very much a focus on security, on the Christian heritage to a degree of uh, Europe, and this idea that Turkey shouldn't accede to the EU uh, that I think won over those voters. Well, at least that was the question that I asked uh, Manfred Weber, the Bavarian politician, the man that must be said is little known outside of the European Parliament at the moment about what does he think won over so many EPP delegates. Let's have a watch. Well, it's, it was my offer which was obviously successful. I said to the delegates, uh, I'm a true Christian Democrat. I believe in the values of my party, of my movement. I want to be a bridge builder in Europe. You have to keep Europe together. And I said, uh, we have to practice democracy. That's a fundamental thing for reconnecting Brussels, European level, to the citizens in the European Union. That is my offer, and it worked. And I'm very happy about this because it gives me a credible and a strong mandate for the next month to lead the strongest, the largest political family in Europe uh, into the elections. Uh, you talked about the Christian heritage um, of Europe, and you talked about churches. Isn't it a bit outdated? Because you're right, there are churches in every village and town in Europe, but there are fewer and fewer people going into them. Well, uh, to, have, uh, to have a religion is a private issue. No statesman, no politician should ever talk about this. Well, why why I, did you mention it in your speech then? Well, I presented myself. I presented myself, and that is part of me, and I'm proud of this, so I have no problem to hide this. Uh, the fundamental question is for us as Christian Democrats, again, that is... Let me say this, that is the fundament of my whole movement. We, we are, since the beginning, of, since the Second World War, we are Christian Democrats. We call ourselves so. So I will not hide this. I, that's, that's my basic uh, principle. The key question for us is, what does it mean in today, today's modern life? And I give you an example. For me, Pope Francis, when he stood in Lampedusa, and when he was in front of the Mediterranean Sea, and said as a, as a Pope, as a Catholic Pope, uh, don't forget the migrants, they are human beings, you should respect the dignity. That is a modern approach of Christian identity. So to show respect to every human person, wherever he is from or she is from. And again, it's a question, what does this mean, Christian identity? And I would say we should identify it and, uh, and describe it in a very modern way. Uh, and just finally, people would say that this is also a victory for Viktor Orban. Are you going to be soft on Viktor Orban because he supported you? Well, I'm one of the personalities who is not only necessary to talk about Viktor Orban, I had the need to vote on this, and I voted for Article 7. So the nuclear option to fight for rule of law, to fight for our fundamental principles, was activated because I and a lot of colleagues in the EPP voted in favor of this option. So for us there is no special treatment on fundamental principles inside of the EPP or outside of the EPP. And I would ask also for the future to have a binding, strong, also with sanction, 
a strong rule of law mechanism in the future. We have to find a mechanism to guarantee to the Europeans that our basic principles are respected by everybody. So you can count on us. The EPP will never give up on the fundamental principles and we will implement them. Well, Tessa, um, just like uh, Europe, I suppose the EPP is uh, divided on many issues as well, not least this issue of uh, Hungary. Many in the party want to see uh, them take a stronger line considering that Viktor Orban, of course, and his party are part of the EPP family, as they call it. We have to wait and see whether that happens. It is an issue they're going to have to confront at some stage. What is also interesting, of course, is the Spritzen candidate process. Uh, ultimately, it is a process that started, what, only five years ago. It's very new. Uh, there are questions whether it will survive, whether actually Manfred Weber will end up, if the EPP remain the largest party, becoming the Commission President. There are suggestions that the EU Council, the people who will ultimately decide, the national leaders, uh, that they may choose someone else. And interestingly, there was one other senior EPP member here today, Tessa, Michel Barnier. He was on that stage, not talking about Brexit, but his vision for Europe. May he become the Commission President? Well, we'll have to wait and see. All be revealed, of course, uh, after the elections next summer. Interesting move indeed. Thank you for that, uh, Darren McCaffrey there, talking to us from Helsinki. Now, with more uh, for analysis, joining me in the studio, we have Shandor Girosh, a reporter from our Hungarian service, political reporter Lily Bayer, and Yasenko Selimovic, a Swedish MEP from the ALDE group. All right, Yasenko, I'll, I'll start with you because, um, you know, we saw Manfred Weber there talking like he's a pacifist, he's inclusive, but he said he voted for Article 7. But at the end of the day, Article 7, uh, uh, pushing for rule of law in Hungary, it's the beginning of a really long process and nothing really can happen to Hungary at this point. Is it paying lip service? I mean, MEPs voted, so is it just paying lip service to Yes, this? it is. Yes, it is, of course. Uh, and uh, Viktor Orban will make a problem for EPP and for Mafra Weber's candidature as well. Uh, it will, he's quite vocal, he's um, loud, he's getting the attention. And everybody will connect Viktor Orban with EPP. And that will be a problem for the EPP further on. So they should have thrown him out for a long time ago. Uh, they, they, there are other parties in other groups as well. In my group, in other groups, there are parties that should have been thrown out. But they should have thrown out before the election because this will be a problem that will linger with them until the elections. You, you say should have been uh, thrown yeah. out already, even from your party. So, OK. Before I, before I get into that, I want to ask why Viktor Orban uh, has such confidence uh, in, in sticking to his, to his line, in, in going against uh, uh, the, the rest of his party. I'll ask you, you're, you're Hungarian, you understand what, is in, what he's uh, thinking, maybe? Yeah, in Hungary, he's always playing for domestic audience in Hungary and he cannot be weak. He cannot be weaker than he was, for example, in September when he attacked uh, some of his colleagues at the European Parliament. because. In this policy, you can go only further, only being more aggressive. He always, always needs an enemy to fight with, uh, whether it's the European Union, whether it's George Soros or the United Nations, doesn't matter, he needs to fight and always needs to take one step further. So if he makes uh, concessions, even small ones, uh, he can be portrayed as a weak person in Hungary and he's not going to make it. Is he playing smart, though? He's trying to still stay within the EPP just enough and then, uh, and then pandering to his well, local audience. You know, EPP is uh, representing the biggest business groups in Europe. They mm. have uh, very good ties to the German car-making industry. And uh, Orban is in very good uh, connection with them business also. Okay. So it's, first of all, business. Hungary wants to do business. EPP wants to do business. European Union is okay with that, right? And uh, that's a very strong it's point. An interesting uh, angle, now, Lily. Is this a strategy? You think that um, it's better to keep your, we say, enemies or the people that are making trouble, keep them close rather than pushing them away and and, and them uh, maybe forming their own uh, alliances later on. Is this a strategy? I do think it's a strategy. Uh, Politico has done some polling recently, and our projection is that the EPP will take 180 seats out of 705 in the next election. 14 of these will belong to Fidesz. And if we also keep in mind that Fidesz has close Hungarian ethnic allies in Romania that will also get a few seats, that's actually a pretty sizable block. And the EPP will be facing fierce competition from populists like mm. Matteo Salvini in Italy. So I think there was a decision following very fierce debate within the EPP 
that for the party as a whole, um, it is better from the leadership's perspective, not from all the members' perspectives, but the leadership, and especially Joseph Dahl and Manfred Weber, they believe that it is better for the uh, party's chances if they keep people like Viktor Orban on their side. So you think they should have been kicked out? If this was a strategy, then it was a bad strategy. <laughs> <laughs> let's, right. let's conclude it, because every political opponent will use every opportunity to point it out until the election and after the election. So they are losing on it. They should have thrown it out. They should have thrown him out, his party, Fidesz, out of the EPP, because he's, he's, he's not, not really... He's damaging the image of the EPP. But why do you and think it it's will too be late? That way. Why do you think it's too late? No, it's not too late. He, he mm. should have been thrown out yesterday. I, I mean, it, it could be... It could have been done... Uh, it could be done in the future as well. But the, the, let me come to the next point. The problem with the Viktor Orban is actually that if they throw him out, he will not disappear. He will just join the, the next group. And the, the problem that is creating these groups, these populists, is not attacked. We are not fighting against the causes that creates populism. So, well, you can put him in another group, he will be there, like mm. Matteo Salvini. But until we start fighting causes for that creates populism, nothing will change. But yes, he should have been thrown out of the EPP. It will be much easier for them to make election. It will be much easier to them to fight the election campaign. Is that what he wants? Uh, to be thrown out in the end? I'm not sure. To make because, a point? Uh, first of all, the EPP has a very strong uh, lobbying power. They can block sanctions mm -hmm. against Hungary. Uh, still, there is a lot of EU money going to Hungary. Just imagine if uh, Fidesz would be thrown out and they would be the independent uh, MEPs. Then uh, the EU Commission could easily attack uh, Hungary with sanctions. Mm -hmm. They could block some of the uh, cohesion funds as it is happening now also. And just imagine if Hungary would not be in the EPP in the last eight years, what would be the situation now? Probably there would be not any... Uh, there would be less independent organizations. Right. Probably the court would be also under political pressure. So the EPP, I think, has a strategy of containing any, a little mean, bit in, Orban. I mean, in any case, we, the, the, the European elections this time will be really closely watched because it could potentially change the makeup of the, the next parliament, and that will be really interesting indeed. All right, well, after the break on raw politics, fresh from the U.S. midterm elections, U.S. President Donald Trump shows no sign of warming up to the media as he clashes with journalists, even booting one from the White House. Don't go away.